In part A of this question, we need to calculate the net magnetic dipole moment of this system of two concentric circular wire loops. Now, we've learned from this chapter that the magnetic dipole moment, symbolized by mu, is equal to the number of turns in the wire multiplied by the current in the wire and then multiplied by the area of the wire. Here we have two wire loops, so to get the net magnetic dipole moment, we would add together the individual magnetic dipole moments. So we would have mu1 plus mu2. It is important to note in part A that the currents are pointing in the same direction. They're both traveling in a clockwise fashion, and therefore the directions of the magnetic dipole moments will be equal. So we can simply add the values together. We will see in part B that the current in the inner loop has been reversed, Therefore, the directions will be opposite, and therefore, rather than adding the two magnetic dipole moments, we'll have to subtract them. But back to part A, in which the currents are both clockwise, we will simply add the magnetic dipole moments. So for mu1, we would take the number of turns in wire 1 multiplied by the current in wire 1 and then times the area of wire 1, and then we'll add this to the corresponding values for wire 2. The number of turns for each wire is actually just one because they are both individual single loops. So in fact, the ends can be disregarded because they're both equal to one. The currents in each are seven amps. So we would plug in seven amps for those currents. And when it gets to the area of wire one, we note that both wire one and wire two are circles. So we'll use pi r squared. We can see the radius of wire one is 20 centimeters, but we'll have to convert that into meters. So we'll take pi, times that radius of 20, but just make sure you multiply the 20 by 10 to the minus two, that will convert it into meters for you. And then don't forget to square it. So there we have the area of wire one. We'll plug in the corresponding values over here for wire two, but let's just make a little bit of room here. Slide this over. And so now we have the current of wire two, which was the seven amps multiplied by pi, and then the radius of wire two was 30 centimeters, so we'll do 30 times 10 to the minus two meters, and again, don't forget to square that. So let's pick up our calculators and punch this in to see what we get. And we end up with about 2.86, and the unit can be clarified if you look at the setup, you have amps times meters squared right there. So that will be the unit of your net magnetic dipole moment. So there's the correct answer to part A. In part B, recall that we are going to switch the current in the inner loop. So we can modify the picture accordingly. We can go back in here, take the inner loop current, and just reverse the direction. And now, since the currents are in reverse direction, the magnetic dipole moments will be in reverse direction as well. And as we noted, that means you're just simply going to subtract the values rather than add them. So the truth is, for part B, we might get a little lazy here. We can kind of copy our setup here, but rather than adding the magnetic dipole moments, we will subtract them. So just change that plus sign to a minus sign, and then we'll re-input this into our calculators. And when we do so, we will see that the net magnetic dipole moment is equal to, well, it comes out negative in the way that I've set it up, but we just want the magnitude. So why don't we just sort of do this? We'll take the absolute value and that will ensure that our result comes out to be a positive value, which is always what you want for a magnitude. So this works out to be 1.1 approximately. And again, this will be in amps meters squared. So there's the correct answer to part B.